E3 has just passed by, and I think we can all agree there's some pretty big announcements this year. Star Wars Battlefront made Kanye West smile. The Nintendo high ups turned into Star Fox characters. And in terms of releases, we got an FF7 remake, Kingdom Hearts 3, Mass Effect, Doom, and a whole lot else. But the indies, the indies slip under the cracks and away from our attention. So today we're spotlighting those cracks in our indie game E3 wrap up. Let the cracks shine. Beginning with No Man's Sky, the indie game Darling of the World was confirmed to be debuting on both the PS4 and PC. We also found out individual planets are so big it'll take days to explore just one, and the game employs a wanted system a la GTA. The new trailer for the tantalizing Cuphead was chock full of bosses that range from possessed giant carrots to eyeball tossing ghosts on a train. On the showroom floor, the press struggled mightily against these opponents, hinting at just how brutal this game will be. Cuphead is coming to Xbox One and PC next year. Super Hot has gotten even hotter, with its addition of melee weapons, headlined by a Japanese blade. The reflecting polygons in the pistols seem to have risen to a new level of gorgeous, and we now know that there are 40 sequences to play through. Catch it on Xbox One and PC later this year. Firewatch has long appealed with its style, and every time we get a deeper look, we see it has a lot of substance as well. E3 showed off the game's humour, and gave more insight to the protagonist's relationship with his supervisor. Coming out on PS4 and PC before the year's end, there's not long to wait now. Fulbright's follow-up to Gone Home is Tacoma. The formula of exploring an abandoned space alone is the same. Yet there are little differences in the space station setting and the use of artificial intelligence that give off a portal feel. We'll find out more next year on Xbox and PC, but for now, Tacoma is a mystery. As perhaps given away by its name, Ashen is very grey. It creates this somberness that runs from its mountains to its skies, and through its characters' empty faces. It's a beautiful melancholy, however and should be fun to explore in this Xbox and PC exclusive survival RPG. DayZ creator and Kiwi Dean Hall's next game is Ion. In his words, the game is a simulation MMO that explores mankind's expansion into space. Still very much in the works, Ion will be coming to Xbox's new early access program first, as well as making its way onto PC. Appearing out of the blue from small Swedish developer Coldwood Interactive, Unravel stole everyone's hearts at E3 with its undeniable charm and underdog narrative. It was with similar appeal that Ori pulled off the same feat at last year's E3, which serves as a good omen for Unravel. Mighty Number no. 9 is so close to its September 15 release date on practically every platform. This rebirth of the legend adds an absorption dash that propels you ahead and absorbs your enemies. It'll also make number 9 faster than old Mega Man games, which is ideal for the modern era and speedruns. Gigantic is a new MOBA blessed with $20 million from Microsoft. It's a new take on the emerging genre. It's cross-platform, has a more inviting cell shaded art and bright colouring, and it has more traditional action and shooter elements. It also looks a lot faster than other third-person MOBA smite. Gigantic's closed beta starts in August. With its stunning watercolour art, Beyond Eyes tells the story of 10-year-old Ray. As she is blind, the player's vision is limited to what Ray can perceive with her other senses. Sometimes this will be wrong, and the world around you will suddenly change. It's scary and wonderful, and by stripping us of our eyesight, we see how memory and other factors shape our world so much. Gemini is the former thesis project of two NYU Game Center students. Deemed a poetic game, Gemini drops you into this surreal world to guide two stars up and up to who knows where. Still on the hunt for a publisher, you can expect to see Gemini sometime next year. Devolver Digital showed off four of its indie titles at E3. The first of these was Ronin. Already on early access, this turn-based action platformer employs a modern samurai style that encourages stealth and infiltration. It has still got a way to go, but watch out for this sharp slice of action. 
Mother Russia Blade seemingly compresses the sensational gore of Mortal Kombat into the world of pixels. And when you consider the rooms are packed with enemies, that's an ocean of blood. Bonus points for being set in an alternate Soviet Union and giving the playable characters crippling drug addictions. PS4 and PC. Eater is a hack and slash that with a combined use of expert lighting and a nightfall setting gives a beautiful and distinct touch to its pixel art. The animation is slick as well, particularly in combat, and as you'd expect in an isometric RPG, there's a lot of loot. Console exclusive to PlayStation. We covered Crossing Souls Kickstarter at the end of last year, and it's great to see it continue to grow. Set in the 80s, the game follows the story of a group of teens who find a mysterious artifact in the woods and then get caught up in a government conspiracy. It's a retro story laced with a lot of familiarity and nostalgia that has us excited to play Crossing Souls on PC and Sony consoles. Being Nintendo, the Japanese giant had to do indie games their own way at E3. The Ninjas at Home program gives Wii U users 9 free demos to try out. Better yet, players will get 15% off the games for up to a month after their release if they try out the demo versions first. Ninjas at Home, which features the likes of Typo Man, Former 8 and Rumbo, will run until the 22nd of June Australian time. We also have some other tidbits. Castle Crash is getting remastered, Early Access titles Ark and The Long Dark are coming to Xbox, Brothers A Tale of Two Sons is coming to next gen consoles, and we saw a bit more of the Molasses Flood and below. That's a wrap guys, all the trailers of all the games shown are in the description. As always, thanks for watching, my name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh, we'll see you next time here on Indie Former. And in terms of remakes, we've got FF7, Mass Effect, Doom, Kingdom Hearts 3, and a whole lot else. And I think you said remake, remakes of all of those. And <laughs>